a particle Q of mass M is attached to one end of a light inextensible string of length R, so this radius here is R, the other end being attached to the point O, which is the centre of the circle. When the particles hang in equilibrium with Q up P, it is given a horizontal velocity of U, obtaining expression for the speed of the particle and for the magnitude of the tension in the string at the instant that OQ makes an angle of theta with the downwards vertical, so this angle here being theta. Hence, if M is 10, uh, kilograms u is 20 meters per second and r is 5 meters and the angle here is 60 degrees find the value of v and t so okay so in this case we were given the diagram if not you'd have to try and draw a diagram so using energy so we're going to measure the pe from this point here so up p the kinetic energy at this point is half mu squared and the potential energy is going to be zero and then at Q, the uh, kinetic energy will be a half mv squared, which is what we've got to find the expression for, v. And then the potential energy, potential energy is mgh, where h is the vertical height. So we'll need to find the vertical height. So if we draw this little line in here, we can see that this is r, and we can see that this distance here is going to be r cos of theta, so therefore the distance that we require is going to be r minus r cos theta that will give us this distance here okay so uh, by the con principle of conservation of uh, energy i.e the energy is preserved we at the start we have a half mu squared plus zero and then at point q we're going to have a half mv squared plus now multiplying this out we get mgr minus mgr cos theta the M's all cancel out, that's great. So what we're going to do now is multiply this through by 2. And so we get that U squared is going to be V squared plus 2GR minus 2GR cos theta. And then making V squared the subject, we get that V squared is going to be U squared minus 2GR plus 2GR cos theta. Writing that out again. And then to find V, we just take the square root. Okay, so it's interesting the velocity is independent of mass. Okay, going back to our diagram, we now need to find this tension here. Now we're going to resolve along this line here, uh, OQ. So going towards the centre of the circle, we have T. And here, we have this component of the weight acting down this way here. And that's going to be, this angle here will be theta. Okay, and therefore this component here will be mg cos theta. So we need to take away mg cos theta. It's a bit strange uh, resolving that way, but that's the way we do it. Now it's equal to the mass times the acceleration. So the acceleration for circular motion is v squared over r. Okay, that's good. We've got an expression here for v squared. So we'll take that and substitute it in. Because we've got t minus mg cos theta is equal to m u squared minus 2gr plus 2gr cos theta divided by r. So uh, now multiplying by m and dividing by r, so we're going to get mu squared over r, and then the r's will cancel out, so we're going to get, uh, and the m will go in, so it'll become 2mg plus 2mg cos theta, the r's cancelling out, and that's great because if we take this over here, we're going to have three lots of this, so we're going to have the tension is mu uh, squared over r minus 2mg plus 3mg cos theta. Okay, having got those two expressions, we could now very easily find the values of the uh, velocity, uh, the speed and the tension. Okay, we got the weight was 10, uh, the mass was 10 kilograms, so the weight's 10 g newtons. We've got that the uh, radius of the circle is five meters. We've got the initial velocity is 20 meters per second, and we have the angle here being 60 degrees. So using our first formula that we derived, which is V is equal to square root U squared minus two GR plus two GR cos theta. Substituting in 20 squared minus two times uh, G5 plus 2g5 cos 60, that gives me 18.734, and round off to three centimetre figures, that gives me 18.7 metres per second. Doing the tension, 
Okay, we've got a mass of 10, so we're going to have 10 times 20 uh, squared over 5, minus 2 times 10g, plus 3 times 10g, cos 60. Make sure you uh, calculate it in the right degree mode. Also, a little tactic is to put the value of uh, g, 9.8, in the g key, unless you want to type it out every time, and then press alpha g for g. It's, it's just a little trick that I do. Make sure you use the fraction button on the calculator. Very, very important. Okay, and that will give you exactly 751 newtons. Okay, like always, I've got this GeoGebra app to go with it. Now, the link to the GeoGebra app will go in the video because it's a little bit too small to see on the screen here. But here, here is the GeoGebra app. You can see the same situation. We see we've got the two correct answers here. Okay, but the good thing is, of course, you can actually change some of the variables. You can change the mass. Okay, you can change the angle. You can see it go right around the whole circle if you wanted to. See what happens. You can change the initial velocity. You can change the values of the circle as well, and it will calculate things. Now, down the bottom here, at the very bottom here, if you read it, uh, but do look in the link because you won't be able to see it on here. Now, uh, for some cases, of course, it, you won't get complete circles of the thing, and this talks about, looks at that. So it will be interesting for you to explore that for yourselves. Okay, so this has been a video to show you about uh, motion in a vertical circle. Uh, I remind you the GeoGebra app is in the link of the video. I hope you've understood and I thank you very much for watching.